All right, so moving on to 2.25, the goal of this lesson, and this is our second to last lesson of the unit, so yay, um, is to use systems of inequalities to solve some problems. All right, we just learned that solutions to systems of inequalities are where? In the overlapping shaded area. So remember that when we go over these. Um, but first, the warm up. Which one doesn't belong? Um, who thinks that A does not belong? Everyone thinks that A belongs. Who thinks that B does not belong? All right. Why do you think B does not belong? Do I not touch? And the rest of them are the two lines touching in all, all of them? Okay, so we'll get to that one, but. That's, a, that's something to notice. I guess, in other words, you could say that these two lines are what to each other. So let's kind of adjust that. Two lines that are parallel. Any other reasons that B does not belong? Yes? Is there a solution to B, it looks like? So in this one, there is no solution because there's no overlapping shaded area, right? Um, doesn't always happen for systems of inequality. Sometimes the shading will be overlapping like here or like all over the place. Um, so just keep that in mind. You have to look where it overlaps the shaded part. Who thinks that C does not belong? Daniel? Uh, I, I thought it means that there's no slope for any class. Okay. Um, so I can kind of help you out with a reason using that logic. Um, this one is the only one that has an undefined slope here. So all the things that I'm seeing. Even if you thought that one belonged, just kind of write it down. Those are like some of the All right, this one has an undefined slope, the vertical line. This one right here, do you know what slope that would be? A zero slope. So on that one, the slope is zero. So far this year, I don't recall us ever coming across an undefined slope. So that's when basically all you have is a rise. I guess we could quantify it with the value, but all we have is a rise. And then our run is what? Is it possible to divide by zero? No. If you put it in your calculator, you'll get an error, like sign. Absolutely impossible, undefined. So this is the only one that's an undefined slope. Um, so that could be the reason that C doesn't belong. Anyone else think C doesn't belong for a different reason? Okay, what about B? Who thinks B doesn't belong? Uh, Gloria, why? So only one line. So is this one a system then? So this is also the only graph it does have a solution, a solution um, but this one's the only graph that is not a system so systems have to have how many two whether it's a system of equations or a system of inequalities you need two things this is just one thing this is just your normal equality so that would be just one constraint so the solution would be the shaded area. If we were looking at a system, it would have to be the overlap of the Make sense? Okay. So now having done that, who can give me a reason why A doesn't belong? Daniel? Oh. So there's no shading. So what does that mean if there's no shading? 
which means it is a, this one's the only one that is what? And why is it not this? Why is there only one this one? Okay, so. So this is the only one that is a system of equations. All right. Um, the others are inequalities of some sort, like B and C are systems of inequalities. B is just an inequality, it's not a system. Um, but this one is the only one that is a system of equations. That's why there's no shading, because there's just one answer, and that's where they only that. Good. Any questions on that? On which ones don't belong, there's usually a reason why every single one doesn't belong. Okay, so so everyone is right. As long as like what you're saying makes sense, then you're all right. Um, so if you were saying something that's completely like out of the realm of what we're talking about, I guess that would be only All right, that's it. Um, yeah. Moving on, so let's do this one example that is on the paper. Here are the graphs of inequalities in this system. Decide whether each point is a solution to the system and be prepared to explain how you know. All right, so that is your task. There are five points. I think I'll give you four minutes for that, and then we'll review them, and you'll have plenty of time to work on those questions. Sounds good. All right. Um, although it didn't have you make the inequalities for this based off of the graph, that is a skill that seems to come up a lot on tests. So let's just kind of talk about that real quick. I mean, I know the answers are here, but here's how you can like understand it. Um, when I'm picking the correct inequality based off of the graph. Just kind of take each line separately. So like, let's say I'm looking at this line first. What's my y-intercept of this line? The dotted line, yeah. The y-intercept is zero, that's where it crosses. So if I'm plugging it into y equals mx plus b, so far I have that it's plus zero. Um, the Y and the X usually say that. I'm going to leave space for the symbol and the slope. Um, so how can you figure out the slope from a graph? It is rise over run. So you're going to want to pick a point that looks like it goes through the graph nicely. And when I say that, I mean like if there's like a P on the graph, I want to pick a point that goes right in the center not a point where I have to like estimate what it is. So if it were me, I'd probably take this one, but you could also take really any of these. Because these all go through the graph line. Um, once you do that, make a triangle and count your rise over run. Make sure you take into consideration what they're counting by. So what's my rise here? Two, what's my run? When I put that over each other, what's my slope? Good. So my slope is 1x, or just 1x, so it goes in front of the x. And then the difference with inequalities is you have to also figure out the sign. All right, so if it's a dotted line, which this is, what are my only two options for the sign? Greater than or less than, good. How you know which one, would be dependent on the shading. So is this graph shaded above or below the dotted line? It's shaded above it. So which one is it then? The greater than or the less than? The greater than. Anytime it's shaded above, your two options are this or this. And then since it's dotted, you know it's definitely that. All right. Um, so that's how you can know. Notice this is the equivalent of that. It's just flipped. Usually don't write the one if it's in front of the X 
I'm usually not around twenty six, but that's how you would figure it out. The opening still faces the Y. Good. All right, for the other line, what's that Y intersect? Good. So if I was coming up with the equation for the other line, I would put a negative six for my Y intercept. That's where it crosses. Um, and then figure out your slope. Look for points that go through the graph nicely. Like here's a few that cross like right in the center of a T. Just take two and make a triangle and count your rise over run. The smaller you make your triangle, usually like the less reducing you have to do. So what's my rise to go from the left point to the right point? Four, and is it positive or negative? Negative because we have to go down. So just like how you read from left to right, read the point from left to right. If I have to go down, it should be a negative slope. And I'm counting by two, that's why it's down. What's my run? So then put that together, rise over run. What's my slope? Good, and that's what I'm not just here. So negative two, and then the x goes there. We just need to figure out the sign. So is this a solid or a dashed line? So my only option for solid would be what? Good. And then is this line, the solid line, is it shaded above or below? Above, because we're shading where all the y's are greater than the line. So that tells you that it's this. Okay, so for the shading above, remember your options were this and this. That's the one you need to solve. Good, any questions? All right, just want to make sure we did that a week a few times. I'm sure you can see it on the test again. Um, but that's how you make the inequality from a graph. What this is asking for is how you know whether each point is a solution. We just talked about that in the last lesson. So is three negative five a solution? All right, good. It would be there. Is that it's in a shaded area, but why is it not a solution? Good. For a system, both have to be true. So that one is. Not it because it's not in the overall. What about zero five? Yes, it is where both of them overlap. So, yes, negative six, six. Yes. Looks like it's right on the line, and that line is solid or dashed. So, yes, because it's on the solid line that is touching the overlapping in the area. So, it does work. What about 3 3? Yeah. No. yeah, so when it's on a dashed line, even though it's in the overlapping shaded area, it doesn't meet one of the constraints. So, it doesn't count as um, in the overlapping shaded area, which is on a dashed line. I'll put no because it's on a dashed line. What about negative two, negative two? No. I'm gonna say yes because it's on a solid line that's touching the overlapping thing. If it was on a solid line like down here, it would be no. But since it's touching the overlapping phase area, I'm going to say yes. Um, I could check that one in Desmos to be 100% sure. But you could also check it algebraically too. But let me see my little T here. All 
Okay. So it is a no because negative two less than negative two is not true. So I guess I was wrong. Sorry. So no, because negative two less than negative two is not true. All right, so that's like most of them you can tell just physically where they're at based on if they're in the overlapping shaded area. The ones that are more challenging, either check in Desmos or check algebraically. So I'll show you algebraically since that's what the solution was. All right, um, remember the coordinates you plug in for what? X and Y. So if I plug it into the top one, that's basically what I have. I typed it in, it doesn't tell me anything, but that's why it's not true. If I plug it into the other one, This is what it looks like. So then we know it's negative two is not less than negative two, it's equal to. So because that is not a solid line is why. Um, so I guess I learned something new today too. Um, and then down here, when I actually see what that equals, It equals negative two, like that's true. Negative two does is greater than or, or equal to negative two, um, but because it doesn't meet both, that's why it's not true. All right, good, any questions? So then that gives us a solid 15 minutes of class time to work. This class is usually pretty good about using time wisely. Um, make sure that you ask questions. So we have the 24 and 25 puzzle piece. You could also get your binder ready for Monday. You could also work on your study guide. Remember the study guide is the one that we make a hundred class points. So, cause it looks just like the test. I want you to do it. So that's right here. All right, make sure you ask questions.